When I was in my 20s, I was a bit of a hustler, you know, made money any kind of way I could. I worked in a construction field and eventually built my own company, mainly with the help of a man named Mr. McManus. He was a huge commercial contractor, just decided to give me a shot one day doing some subcontractor work. Now, everything was good. I went into the flooring business, got contracts, wood floors, marble floors. My first three jobs with Mr. McManus, I made $45,000. My life was fantastic. Until I got a call from this woman named Linda, real estate broker. Mr. McManus had just recently built her building. And the call from this woman was the weirdest phone call that I've ever had in my life. She tells me that the new building we just finished is haunted and that she called every contractor that work on a job, but nobody will talk to her. So she reaches out to Mr. McManus himself, talks to his secretary and no reply. Sitting there, listening to this woman on the phone, the first words that come out of my mouth is, ma'am, I'm not sure if there's anything that I can do to help you. That's when she says she had a psychic come out and walk the property. This psychic told her to call me because it was something that I did with the floors that caused the issue. Huh? She begs me to come to the building for myself. She says it won't take long until you see exactly the craziness that I'm talking about. We get off the phone. I put it off for over a week and then she just starts to blow up my cell phone, calling me back to back to back until finally I'm forced to go over and take a look at the property. It's a Saturday. When I get there, we sit in her office and she just starts talking about the issues they've been having. Wet, barefooted footprints on the floor in the daytime and at night. Handprints on the windows and the walls. And at night, she says she's been seeing shadow people everywhere. Five and six of them. Stop right here for a second. And let me explain something to you. I am not a superstitious person at all. So I'm sitting across the table from this woman thinking she has lost her freaking mind when the door to her office slams closed and she says see that's the type of shit that i'm talking about getting up from the chair walking over opening the door there's no one there i ask her linda is there anyone else in the building with us she says no there's no one here but me and you returning to sit back down in the chair you hear what sounds like someone who had just stepped out of the shower walking across the floor i swear to you that splat 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 that wet foot on marble floor sound she looks at me with this calm look on her face and says go check it out for yourself and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about so i get up walk into the hallway towards the front of the building and right there in the lobby is a circle literally a circle of wet footprints looking around there's no one there and when i tell you these prints were wet i bent down and touched them myself these were wet footprints Keep in mind, I'm not a superstitious person at all. I don't believe in ghosts, monsters, none of that. At least until this day, I didn't. I'm thinking to myself, okay, this lady's trying to play a joke on me, but what's in it for her to play this kind of prank? Maybe she can't afford the building. I, I just didn't get it. It didn't add up. Again, as I'm standing there in the lobby, I hear another door slam. She comes walking out of her office, purse, keys in hand, and says, listen, I can't take this shit anymore. I'm going home. I just wanted you to see what we're dealing with. Over the next few days, I tried to put the whole situation out of my mind. Listen, that wasn't my problem. I got paid to do a job. I'm a subcontractor. I did what I was supposed to do. What does this have to do with me? Right? But I couldn't. I just couldn't get it out of my mind. I knew Mr. McManus. And so I pick up the phone and I call his secretary and I say, hey, could you have Mr. McManus give me a call back? A day passes, another day passes, and no return phone call. Now, this is the first time that this man has not called me back. So I head on over to his office and sit and wait. Now, when you walk into Mr. McManus's office, you know that he's made a boatload of money. Pictures with him and politicians on the wall. He has his own humidor and the ventilation equipped to suck the smoke out. We're not talking about a poor man here. I tell him, Mr. Mac. You know, this lady, Linda, that we built that last building for is freaking out on me, talking about I'm the reason why she's having some major problems over there. He asked me what kind of problems I explain it to him. He laughs and says, son, we don't have anything to do with that. Maybe it's the land that it was built on. There's no telling what's going on. But I'm glad that you came over because I have two more jobs coming down the pipeline that I want you to get in on. And I need you to get me some estimates for these jobs immediately. 
leaving his office walking past the secretary this feeling of joy and glee comes over me because i know i'm about to make 25 more thousand dollars but still in the back of my mind something just didn't feel right so i head back to my office open up the files for linda's job and just started skimming through trying to see if i can find anything my cell phone rings again and it's her she she tells me that the psychic has came back over to the property and i needed to come there immediately now immediately to her and immediately to me were two different things so it takes about an hour to an hour and a half before i get there but when i do she's standing in the lobby with this woman holding a sledgehammer in her hand the woman introduces herself as a psychic and takes that sledgehammer and starts smashing the floors up now I'm thinking to myself, okay, cool. You smashed up the floors. What the hell is this going to prove? When this woman turns over a piece of the marble and you see a small date written on it. December 12th, 1949. She moves over about 10 feet, slams the floor again, flips over another piece. And you can see what looks like letters on this piece of marble. Now this goes on for the next 15 minutes, her literally tearing up the floor, turning over more and more small pieces with names you hate to. Okay, now you know Dark Waters is not about to give it all away for free. Want the rest of this story? Go to IamDarkWaters.com and become a member today. Only $4.99 per month gives you access to this library of true horror stories. Become a member today.